everyone. I'm Akanksha. I'm the product manager here at Pi Academy. And with us, we have Lewis, who is the head of our English department. And welcome to the 11 plus exam last minute revision strategies for guaranteed success webinar. And essentially in this webinar, we would be walking you through the key tips that every 11 plus candidate should remember uh, before they write their exam. And I would be handling the mathematics side of questions in our Q&A at the end of the webinar. And Lewis would be handling the English side of questions. So Lewis, let's begin the webinar. Great, thank you, Akanksha. Um, and good morning, everybody. Um, as Akanksha said, my name is Lois and I do a lot of the English tutoring and uh, resource writing at Pi Academy. So I've got plenty of experience working with lots of students over the years. Uh, so. And what I'm going to do is talk through some of the um, the main areas to be aware of for these last few weeks for English. And if there's anything I don't cover, please do um, let me know in the questions uh, later on and I'll try do my best to answer. So I'll just switch over to my screen. OK, here we go. So um, today our plan is to talk through uh, these main things. We're going to discuss the various different 11 plus exam board formats, both for maths and English. Uh, we're also going to give you some tips and suggestions for ways to assess your child's readiness for the 11 plus exam in these last couple of weeks. Um, and then we'll talk about some last minute um, revision tips and strategies that you can employ um, just in this last run up to the exams. So um, for English, this is the time now where it's good to know exactly what the exam board is that you're going to be looking at. So we've been stressing throughout the year that the main thing to do when you're preparing is to get curric to do curriculum first, really. So have your all your skills, no matter what board you're doing, have all your skills uh, being prepared in the same way. Your grammar, your spelling, your punctuation, your comprehension, inference, um, vocabulary, creative writing, all those things you should have been practicing generally. Now it comes to the point where the example that you're doing, this is where you can fine tune what you've been preparing and you can be really aware of what the exam board that your child will be taking will involve. So, um, as you may know, these are the main exam boards that are typically used for the 11 plus, uh, particularly for you know, grammar schools. Uh, independent schools may use different, may use their own um, exam papers, but these are the ones that are used most commonly. So we have GL, um, Granada Learning. This is the one that most schools typically tend to use, the most common. Um, as you can see, it is a multiple choice paper. It is comprised of comprehension, spelling, punctuation, and grammar. And I will show you a sample paper in just a moment. Um, so that one does not involve any creative writing unless your school has different stages. They may have to do a creative writing task um, as a second stage entrance exam. Then the next um, exam board is SET. This is only used by a handful of schools, but it is worth, if you are doing this one, it is worth being prepared for it. So it is just like a GL, it's also multiple choice questions, one or more correct options. So that's the difference. Uh, there is a bit of variation for GL and SET in that some questions require you to identify more than one more than one answer or they may not specify how many answers you have to come up with so it is a little bit trickier there are also two comprehension texts for set so students need to be able to manage their time really effectively there is also a spelling section as well so that's set and then finally we have cSSE so if you are looking at a school in Essex you will likely be taking this one this is quite different to GL and set it is not multiple choice throughout there are some multiple choice questions but it is much more of a range this is more of a descriptive style of paper meaning that students have to write in full sentences quoting from the text and analyzing the effect of language identifying literary devices in their own words rephrasing things summarizing things identifying um, information using their own full sentences. So it's quite different to the other two. There's a comprehension section followed by applied reasoning and CSSE also doesn't contain another, um, what they call continuous writing, short continuous writing paper, which follows the comprehension as well, which involves two short writing tasks um, of, I believe the whole paper is 30 minutes. So it's quite short. Now, 
I'll just quickly talk you through some of our sample papers to give you an idea of what these could look like and show you the kind of different questions, you know, how the questions vary across the boards. Now, as we, um, as I did say before, if I just go to my, I'll just show you these exam papers now. As I said before, the curriculum is the same for all of these papers. I should be able to see it up on the screen there now. Um, so the curriculum is the same. You know, students will be required to have very similar skills across the board. Um, I'll start with the GL to show you what I mean by this. Uh, there will be a comprehension passage, which you must first of all read alongside which you'll be you know answering the questions alongside reading it there's a range of different questions for english some of these are as you can see vocabulary there's some sort of information retrieval questions identifying literary devices inference so you can see even on just the first page of this gl paper there are already four different question types um then we've got more literary devices explaining um sort of obscure phrasings or understanding what the vocabulary is talking about, summarizing. Um, you've got more vocabulary, understanding phrases. You've got, you know, questions about the author's intentions, types of words, so parts of speech, word classes. So there's a real range of question types in the GL paper. So you need to make sure that your child is practicing all of those different styles. This is then followed by a spelling um, section, which um, essentially you, this is the same for the other two parts in the GL paper, you have to identify the mistake. So identifying spelling mistakes, and then that's followed by capital letter and punctuation mistakes, you have to identify if there is a mistake in the sentence. So this is where they need to know their punctuation and capital letter use really, really accurately. And then the final section of GL is best group of words, which is where they need to be able to understand grammar and how certain prepositions fit with certain words or verb agreement, subject agreement, that kind of thing. So grammar is really tested significantly in that last part of the GL paper. Now I will go through SET. As I said before, this is a different style to GL. It starts off with spelling, multiple choice the whole way through for SET. You have to identify the misspelt word or the correctly spelt word in a group of misspelt words. You will have two comprehension passages. They will be related by some kind of theme, which makes them easier to compare. Students will have to read a longer passage followed by questions just on the first passage. And as I said before, some of these are single answers. Some of them have more than one. Uh, for example, you can see question 12 here is select all that are correct. And this is a literary device question because it's referring to alliteration. This first one is inference. What does the opening imply? Then you've got vocabulary for number 13. More inference for number 14. So identifying phrases from the text. So that's, as, as I said with GL, it's really varied. All the different question styles and, and skills will be tested across the questions for text one. Text two will be much shorter, usually just over a page. And as I said, it will be on a similar point. So these two are both, these two texts are both about painters. So they have a theme in common. You will then have to follow, follow this with some, with a range of different questions just on text two. And then this is the unique to SET. There is a comparison section where you have to, this shows, this is where you have to really show that you've read and understood both texts because you have to identify true statements about both texts, differences about both texts, and understand particularly the main characters of the two passages and how they contrast and compare with each other. So that is SET. And then finally, CSSE. As I said before, this is a descriptive, more of a descriptive style paper. You have a passage to read. It's usually a couple of pages for CSSE. And then the questions vary in style. You'll have a, this is a information retrieval question for number one, where you have to tick a box. So it is multiple choice. Then you've got inference questions, writing down the relevant quotations from the passage. You've got um, understanding vocabulary, explaining the meaning of obscure phrasing. You have to do in your own words questions, identifying keywords. So it's a real similar, similar skills to the other ones really, but you are just answering it in a slightly different way.
This is then followed after the comprehension, there'll be a short applied reasoning section, which is only five questions. So it's very short as well. Actually, this one, no, this one is five as well. Sometimes it's four, but sometimes it's five where you have to find the missing letters from words to complete them. And then, as I said before, with CSSE, there is also a continuous writing section uh, where they have to write two short writing tasks in a short amount of time. So hopefully that's given a uh, pretty thorough overview of each of the three main exam boards. So if there is anything else, um, I, will, I will hand back to your Akanksha here, um, but if there is anything else that um, is unclear about English or any tips you would like, please do put them in the chat and I will do my best to answer them at the end. So back to you, Akanksha. Thank you, Lewis. So I would be sharing my screen now. Is my screen visible? I think it's still possibly on mine. Shall I stop mine? There we yes. go. Okay. So yes, so we have had a walkthrough of the 11 plus English boards and now we would be uh, walking through the 11 plus maths boards. So as you can see, there are three main boards when it comes to 11 plus maths, which is GL, Granada Learning, SAT, Selective Eligibility Test, and CSSE, which is Consortium of Selective Schools in Essex. We also had another board called CEM, but this year a lot of schools have dropped that board. Uh, that's the reason why uh, CEM is not included in the table, but you can always, if you are still aiming for a CEM school, you can always ping us on chat and we would guide you. So let us have a look at the various boards and what is the difference between them. So as you can see, GL and SAT, they both have MCQ type questions with one correct option. And that is where GL and SAT are different from CSSE, which has subjective questions. And in the GL board, you would see that the time duration is around 50 minutes. And that is the same uh, in SAT board also, which is 50 minutes. And in CSSE, the time duration is around 60 minutes. So I will walk you through some of the uh, sample papers for each of these boards. Yes. So as you can see, this is the GL style sample paper. Over here in Pi Academy sample paper, we have introduced this section called instructions. Now, the reason why we have placed this section is to mimic what happens in the, uh, in the actual examination. So basically, we urge parents to encourage their kids to go through the instructions of the question paper that is handed to them in the actual examination. So uh, this question paper, as you can see, it tells them what is the time duration, what is uh, the number of questions, whether it's multiple choice, whether it has negative marking, uh, it also gives them instructions along the lines of uh, using symbols like go to the next page, do not turn the page until do, uh, told so, stop working and await instructions. Now, the reason why it's important to familiarize uh, yourself with these symbols is so that you're not caught off guard in the actual examination. So when you are attempting our uh, GL style sample papers, make sure to mimic the actual exam uh, uh, style Make sure that you're sitting in a quiet place, that you are following the time duration for each of these papers, because that is the only thing that will make sure that you are properly prepared for the final examination. So in GL style, as I uh, just mentioned, there are MCQ style questions. So as you can see, we have five options, A to E, and these MCQ style questions uh, are meant to basically, uh, as you can see here, there's a slide, there's a space left in these sample papers. And this space is meant to allow you to uh, detail out your stepwise calculation. So this is another point that we have noticed in our last uh, 10 years of experience that children tend to skip through the steps. They tend to calculate in their mind and there's a high probability of going wrong when you do that. So we encourage you to utilize this space, detail out your working so that you're sure of the answer that you are attempting. So as you can see in GL style, we have these questions with uh, MCQ. There are some questions with diagrams. So we encourage you to go through these uh, various types of questions so that you're better prepared. Now coming to the SAT style of paper. Here also, as you can see, it's very similar. We have multiple choice questions and each question carries one mark. And as you can see, answers should be clearly marked in pencil in the provided sheet. So we would be showing you the sheet uh, in which answers are generally marked so that you are uh, prepared for the final exam. So as you can see here also, we have 
multiple choices, choices A through E. And uh, as I scroll down, you can see there are certain diagrams. There's a little space here to do your workings. Now coming to the CSSE style. So as we saw, the CSSE style is slightly different in the sense when you scroll down here, you can see that there's a very clear space given for showing your markings. So you need to be uh, very careful. The way you showcase your uh, solution, you are going to get judged based on that. Your marks are dependent on the steps that you detail out over here. So make sure that you uh, write each and every step. You can always visit our website to understand how to write these steps and make sure to detail out your answer in the space that is provided here. And also uh, ensure that you don't use a very large style of font while you're writing these answers because you need to very neatly fit your answer in this space. So please keep uh, all those pointers in mind. So yes, you can use these sample papers from our website. You can download them. Uh, you can mimic the actual exam conditions and write them. And in the end, you can uh, see the answers on our website and score yourself and see how you performed. So now coming back to the presentation. So we went through the GL, SCT, and CSEC style of uh, uh, sample papers. Now we would give you some last minute revision tips. So the first tip, uh, which is also the basis of this uh, webinar is to follow an 11 plus exam revision planner. This is extremely important. We have always uh, told parents to make sure that they have a plan in place for the uh, students. So I'll walk you through the planner that we have prepared for you. So this planner would be shared with you at the end of the webinar. And as you can see, this is a two week preparation planner. So we have week one and week two. We have made sure to uh, consider all major subjects with which are maths, English, comprehension, vocabulary, SPAC, creative writing, and uh, revision and practice. So follow this planner for the next two weeks or more, depending on when your examination is. And as you can see, we have detailed out the topics topics for uh, each of these subjects. So we have topics for max. The most important topics have been prioritized and placed in week one. So the important ones are numbers, fractions, decimals, and so on. So what you can do with this planner is just uh, start practicing, click on the name of the topic. It would take you to our website where all the questions that you want to practice are available for free. And you can always subscribe to our uh, 11 plus max pass papers, or actually I would suggest that you subscribe to our 11 plus monthly subscription in which you would get access to the complete website. So you would get access to all these papers that we have detailed out in the planner. You would be able to access them for uh, the price is just 99 per month. But for you, as you are, uh, you've joined our webinar, we would be giving you a coupon code so you can access 30,000 questions for just 69 pounds per month. And that's a very cost-effective solution. So we urge you to subscribe to our monthly plan and begin practicing. Uh, you can always view the questions on our website and you can check the answers by clicking on the answers tab. So in this plan, as you can see, we have the week one and week two plan, uh, which is subject wise. We also have a plan for the practice papers and mock questions, mocks that you should be attempting. So here I would like to uh, just highlight that it is very important to attempt mocks, but it is even more important to check where you went wrong in the first mock exam before you start attempting the next mock exam. So if you aim at you know finishing as many mock exams as possible before the school, uh, examination, you would not be well prepared you need to first prioritize learning from the mock exams. So after you're done with your first mock exam, sit again with the answers, see where you went wrong. And what you can do is you can create a topic wise list. You can see in which topics did you go, did you get less marks, in which topic uh, do you need to improve? So in a way you can have a, you can diagnose yourself. You can have a diagnostic test on your own to see which topics you are performing well at. At the same time, you can also visit our website and you can attempt one of, you can book one of our 11 plus diagnostic assessments. So essentially what we do, do in these assessments are, we make sure that we check 
your child on all the topics which are present in whichever subject that you've booked assessment for. So if it is 11 plus max, we make sure that you have, uh, that the child has been tested on all topics. We also give them a very detailed plan and strategy on what to do, how to prioritize which topics, which courses would be better for your child to boost their scores in the final examination. So while I'm talking about following the plan, it is also very important to uh, have a diagnostic assessment. So you can always uh, come to our website under the pricing section, you can see that we have the 11 plus diagnostic assessment. So you can always book the diagnostic assessment and that would give you an even clearer plan ahead, uh, prioritizing the topics that you are not currently very comfortable with. So coming back to our 11 plus exam practice papers and mocks, so as you can see, we have uh, detailed out the practice papers and mocks for two weeks, and we have also segregated it by subject. So you have maths and English, and you can access all of these papers also with our 11 plus monthly subscription. So essentially with this monthly subscription in one go, you can access all our topic wise uh, subscriptions across all subjects and you can also access our practice papers and our mock papers and our board specific practice papers and not to mention uh, not to forget you can also uh, access our 11 plus exam revision practice subscription with the monthly subscription so this subscription is extremely good because it gives you a capsule form of revision which uh, given our time constraint this is a very good option now let's go back. Okay, so we went through the first tip, which was to follow an 11 plus exam revision plan. The second tip is to ensure your child has covered all topics as per the 11 plus exam syllabus. Now, one of the main questions that parents uh, come to us with is, how do I know which topics? Which topics are the ones that I should prepare my child for? So all you need to do for this is to just head to our website. Over here, you can see under the 11 plus paper section, we have detailed out the maths topic wise questions. So in the maths topic wise questions, when you click on the maths topic wise questions, you would be able to view the complete topic list. So as you can see, the, suppose the topic of numbers, which is very important, it has around 3000 questions. And as we can scroll down, you would see that we also have uh, over here, algebra. Algebra is a very important question. We have statistics, ratios and proportions, and geometry, and many other uh, questions. So what we suggest is make sure that you are practicing the high volume, high frequency topics. And at the same time, you're also prioritizing questions which span across multiple topics. So the more complicated a question, the more topics would be, more concepts would be involved in it. So when you are practicing, make sure that you practice such questions. And as you can see on our website, we have the questions which are free for all to view. So you can start practicing right away. And you should also follow this time guidance that we have provided. This time guidance has been, uh, uh, decided by, uh, from, by our uh, 11 plus expert tutors who have 10 years of experience in the, the 11 plus examination. So if you follow this time guidance, you would be even better prepared for your final exam. So coming to the third tip, which is to give high importance to high mark topics. So this is uh, exactly what I covered just now. So these are the high mark topics. The, the reason why there are 3000 questions that are under numbers is because these topics have been, uh, have a higher frequency and a lot of schools ask questions from these topics. So make sure that you have uh, properly prepared and practiced these topics. Now coming to the fourth point, which is solve 11 plus exam board specific practice papers under time conditions. So on Pi Academy, we also have our board specific practice papers. So for example, under 11 plus papers, you can access the 11 plus practice papers, which are board specific. So you can see the boards have been mentioned here. It is CM, GL, CSSE, NCT, ISCB, and so on. So as you can see, we have all boards, multiple boards. Uh, we have uh, segregated practice papers uh, for maths and English. And even if you're 
targeting multiple boards, you don't need to buy every single one of these subscriptions. All you need to do is buy the 11 plus monthly plan, which is over here under pricing, 11 plus exam monthly plan. And in one go, you would be able to access all these practice papers. So yes, uh, solving board specific practice papers is very important. Now coming to the next step, which is to analyze the mistakes done in previous papers before solving the next. So I had touched upon this point just now. It is it is very, very important. In fact, it is we would suggest that you don't do more than two mock exams before the examination, before the final exam. As long as you're doing those two mock exams properly and you are thoroughly analyzing the results of the mock exam, after analyzing the results, you are prioritizing the topics and you are going through each question that you went wrong in. You are uh, understanding whether it was a conceptual mistake, whether you made a silly mistake before uh, because you were not writing down the steps properly, whether you scored less because you were not fast enough, whether uh, the time was not sufficient. So you should always analyze your mock exam before moving to the next one. Now coming to uh, the fifth point, creating 11 plus revision notes and flashcards. So what you can do in, uh, you can head to Pi Academy and here in 11 plus papers, you can see that we have the 11 plus revision and practice uh, subscription. So what this subscription does is if you are uh, having a time constraint, we have these 10 minute tests. They're just 10 minutes and there are 90 of them. So you can have you can go through these tests to make sure that you are well revised. This is very helpful for those who have a time crunch. So uh, al uh, along the same lines, you should also prepare short notes. You should prepare uh, revision cards, and all of it would help you revise for the exam better. Then lastly, we would um, encourage you to take short breaks to avoid preparation burnout. Uh, I would personally encourage you to not uh, study for more than one or one and a half hour at a stretch. Uh, always take short breaks. It energizes your brain and it improves your performance. Now coming to some 11 plus exam tips for the day of the examination. So I would be repeating the first tip that I had said, carefully read the instructions given on the exam paper. The reason why we say this is because it calms down your mind. Or else, you know, there's always a lot of uh, children do face stress when they are about to uh, appear for the examination. So it would calm you down. It would make sure that you're able to give your best. So go through the instructions at the beginning. Make sure that you are uh, signing in the right places. Make sure that you are answering, you're uh, bubbling the correct answers and be very calm. Second is take note of the total time and total number of questions. So this is another thing that we have noticed that a lot of students are very good when it comes to their conceptual clarity. It is the accuracy in which they tend to fumble. So we do spend a lot of time practicing our questions, but we sometimes miss out on the fact that these are time tests. So make sure that any test that you're writing, you stick to the time limit because in the final examination, there is going to be a time limit. Now coming to the third point, Check if there are any negative markings. Now, usually there are no negative markings in the 11th place exam, but just for your peace of mind, go through the instructions again very calmly and check that there are no negative markings. Fourth uh, tip is always read through all the questions before starting to solve the paper because sometimes the easy questions are in the middle or at the end of the paper. So you can actually go to our uh, website and see some of our school specific papers. So in 11 plus papers, if you go to say 11 plus past papers, you can see the papers, the actual question papers that were utilized by these various schools. So you can see the names of the schools here and you would see a pattern that these papers have. The first few questions tend to be slightly more challenging and the easier questions roll in a little later. So we encourage students to just have a quick scan of the question paper so that you know exactly which questions you are good at. And in the event of a time crunch, you can prioritize those questions and score a higher mark. Now, 
we would encourage you to not leave any questions because there is no negative mark. So this, these are very low hanging fruits, right? Uh, given that there is no negative mark, it makes sense that we attempt every single question. We don't leave anything. We bubble whichever answer we think is correct. And uh, this basically maximizes our probability of getting a better score. Now, in the case of MCQ questions, which are in the GL and SET board, we uh, try to answer questions by eliminating the wrong answers. So a lot of students, uh, what happens is they might not be able to solve the question at that point in time, but they can definitely eliminate one or two of the options. So if you are, suppose you have four options, A, B, C, and D, and you are able to eliminate C and D because you know it can't be C or D, we encourage you to uh, bubble either A or B because there's still a 50% probability that you would be right. So practice eliminating the wrong questions. Finally, be careful while filling out your answer sheets. So we would like to show you some of the answer sheets that uh, we use for maths and English. So as you can see in maths GL style, we have the answer marking sheet. You, uh, you would be writing your name, the date, the school's name, and you would be marking these boxes. So the instructions here say, please mark boxes with a thin horizontal line like this. So practice doing this so that it would make you more uh, prepared for the final exam. And parents can use this sheet to check the final scores and detail out their comments. Similarly, we also have uh, English answer marking sheets. You can see that there are different sections for comprehension, spelling, capital letters, drama exercises. So you can utilize these answer sheets to be better prepared for the exam. Now, in the end, make sure that you leave some time for rechecking your answers at the end of the examination. This is very important because when we are uh, trying to solve questions very quickly, it is quite possible that we would make certain four pass. So leave some time to revise your answers and you would be uh, in that you would be ensuring a higher accuracy. So with this, we would be sharing the LMPRIS exam revision planner with you in the email. And with this, we open up the chat for any questions that parents uh, could have for us. And thank you so much for attending the webinar. We would be providing you this coupon code, which is webinar 30. Using this, you can get a flat 30% discount across the entire Pi Academy website. We have uh, currently some courses running. We have the summer courses running. So you can always use that webinar 30 coupon to access some of our summer courses. You can use it for the monthly plan. And you can, so as you can see in this 11 plus summer intensive courses, we have creative writing course, which is starting tomorrow. We have a public speaking course. We have NVR and algebra and, and SAT revision workshop. So we recommend that you utilize the coupon and book the courses that suit you best. And even after the 11 plus summer uh, courses, we have the 11 plus term time courses, which are starting from 16th of September. We would be adding a few more courses here. So you can uh, keep it and keep an eye on this web page and book what is suitable for you. So let us see the questions that we are getting in the chat. So Raji is asking, can we access recording? Yes, Raji, definitely. We would be sharing the complete recording of this uh, webinar. We would be sharing all these sample papers that uh, I'm, I've walked you through. We would also be sharing our coupon code with you at the end of the webinar. Someone is asking, please, may you send the link for the planner? I'm a Pi Academy subscriber. Hi, just we would be sending the link to all the planners, all the sample papers, and the coupon code in the email. Max is asking, where can I find the sample answers sheet? Will students expect to answer in these type of sheet? Yes, Max, uh, these are the sheets that students generally uh, answer in. So we would be sending these sheets in the email. You can uh, download them and practice uh, bubbling the correct answer. Viren is asking, can we access the planner? Yes, Viren, we would be emailing everything, every document that I've walked you through, they would all be emailed to you. Yes, Pritesh, we would be sharing the presentation and timetable with you. 
someone is asking what is the difference between uh, no negative marking and negative marking. So essentially negative marking is if you get the answer wrong, a certain portion of the mark is deducted. So most uh, grammar school examinations, they do not have negative marking, which is good. And which means that you should not leave any question unattempted. You should put any option that you think is best because that has a higher probability of working. Kunmi is asking, what about NVR and VR revision plan? So Kunmi, you can uh, head over to Pi Academy and under 11 plus papers, you would see we have the verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning papers. So it would be uh, beneficial if you just head over here it, under 11 plus verbal reasoning pa practice papers, you can see that we have a grade tracker. So using the grade tracker as a, a, an indication of how you are performing from uh, one paper to the other, you can utilize this as a planner. So Amen is asking that I bought the yearly subscription, but I was not aware of the monthly uh, plan. Could I switch? Yes, Amen, you can always uh, just ping us on our support chat and we would guide you from there. So are there any other questions? Salish is asking, uh, in your monthly subscription, do you have Henrietta Barnett and, or other HPS question papers as well? Yes, we do. So Henrietta Barnett is one of the uh, schools that we have covered and we have past papers of Henrietta Barnett. So when you access the monthly plan, you would be able to access uh, the past papers of Henrietta Barnett also. I've just seen a question. Um, I hope I can't just okay if I just answer this. Um, yeah. I'm not sure who it's from, but it says, how much time would I get to write two short writing tasks for CSSE? And I believe um, uh, it's like recommended that you spend about 20 minutes on it. Um, I'm looking at the instructions here. Um, you have, it, it kind of is combined in with the writing part, sorry, the reading part. The whole thing is 60 minutes, but there's like a 20 minute chunk on the end that they recommend you spend on con continuous writing. So essentially 10 minutes on each. They are very short. They're only six or seven um, sentences each. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. Max is asking, is there a clock in the test room? Uh, Lewis, what, what is your experience? Is there a clock in the test room? I mean, yeah. Begin? Yes. I mean, I, I think in all experiences I have and all students I've spoken to, there's always a clock um, because I think that would be odd for them not to do that. So you are expected to be able to, yeah, to kind of time manage. So, yeah, there's usually one of those big clocks at the, at the front. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. So Kunmi is asking, where can we get the past paper questions for schools of, uh, of NVR and VR? So uh, Kunmi, the questions that you see here on Pi Academy, the verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning questions have been created using the past paper questions uh, from the various 11 plus schools. So if you go through these subscriptions and you practice them, you will be able to, you're, you would be essentially practicing for the same questions that have been asked in the previous uh, years. There's a question on persuasive writing, Lewis. Oh yes, but, I see it. Yeah. So I'll, I'll read it out. So for the persuasive writing piece, can we make up the evidence, for example, quotes to support the argument? Yes, of course. You do not have Google. You don't have anything that you're gonna be able to look things up uh, for it. So yeah, make them up, but make them sound reasonable. So, you know, if you are doing a quote, make it sound like, sensible you know so if i always give the example of if you're writing about you know protecting the environment or something you might use someone well known such as david attenborough and you could make up a simple quotation saying um you know natural a naturalist and documentarian david attenborough says we must protect nature before it's too late or something like that so yeah you can make them up as, they, they should sound reasonable but of course you have to make them up you're not going to be able to memorize loads of, of real quotes so yes you can we have one question from Raji. I don't have a printer, so can I not take the mock test online? Yes, Raji, our mock tests are actually online. Uh, if you head over here to the mock exam section, you would see that all these mock exams are uh, taken uh, on Pi Academy's website with a timed uh, timer. So you don't have to waste uh, paper by downloading them. But in the event that you want to just get familiar with uh, sitting down on a desk with a paper in front, you can always take a printout. 
There's a few people asking about CEM and FSCE. I'll just quickly mention this. CEM really isn't used very much nowadays. It's kind of been overtaken. A lot of schools have overtaken it with GL. Um, FSCE is really not used by many schools at all. I believe there's only three schools that use it. Um, but from what I know, it is three main sections. You have uh, comprehension, you have a sort of uh, vocabulary section and then you have missing letters and there's also creative writing but some of some of the paper is done online and some of the paper is done uh the creative writing part I'm actually not sure if they do that part online or not but it's the typical sections you know what you can expect to find in pretty much any English paper I believe it starts with comprehension then there's vocabulary and then there's like a missing letters section um so that's what I know about FSCE but there are really very few schools that do it so if your school is doing it um you can always look up the format online they they have the format there available for you. So Dia is asking, when do we get the results from the test? So Dia, if you're referring to the 11 plus test, it would be, it would be best to uh, check the website of the school that you're targeting because they don't all release the, date, uh, the results at once. So visit the school website. Agreed. Shelly is asking, can I get a couple of recommendations for books to read that are good standard and will help in the interview? So Shelly, that's an amazing question. So there are two things we would like to uh, walk you through. First is that we have an 11 plus interview guide. So you can uh, always subscribe to the guide or you can subscribe to the monthly plan. The 11 plus interview guide is a part of it. We have detailed out uh, around a hundred questions with proper answers uh, and the do's and don'ts for each answer. So you can go through this. At the same time, uh, you can also view the planner and in the planner, we have detailed out some books that you can uh, go through. So as you can see here in the planner under additional resources, you can see certain books that you can go through. We have the links to them. And we can also, we would also share a list with you, uh, a list of recommended reading material. I think um, there's a question from meet Vasa here um is there creative writing in gl and um there is no creative writing in the main first test no it's just comprehension as i talked through it earlier there's comprehension and then there's spelling punctuation slash capital letters and then there's the best group of words however it may be that your school does a second a second stage and that is when they will do the creative writing section if they're going to do it at all uh so just be aware of that but if you want to practice our creative practice creative writing we have plenty of resources you can use plenty of writing papers that you can practice from and also even if you're not necessarily going to be if you're not 100 percent sure if you will be doing a, a creative writing task or not you know if you don't know if it's going to be asked for the second stage Practice this anyway, because it's great practice for your punctuation. It's great practice for your grammar, for your spelling. All the creative writing skills you use are going to be really useful in those multiple choice GL sections anyway. So don't abandon it. If you even if you are set, if someone says, oh, no, you don't have to do creative writing for GL, do it anyway, because it will still improve your skills. And you may find that you have to do a state second stage and do it anyway. Then I hope that answers your question. We have a question here from Jess. Uh, please, may I have some tips on how to write the creative writing piece? Oh, yes, I can see the question there. Um, okay, so some tips about how to write about in the creative writing exam. Okay, this is what I suggest that you do. Uh, was that Jazz who said that question? Um, this is what I suggest you do. Make sure that you have practiced lots of different styles of writing. So what you can see that we have on our uh, website which will help you is lots and lots of examples of basically every type of creative writing you could ever expect to do so we've got plans we've got model answers things you can borrow ideas you can look at what a good example should look like and what you should do is make sure that you've got some idea some template for any kind of paper well writing class you could expect to find use our checklist to help you there we've got them for descriptive writing we've got them for persuasive writing we've got them for narrative writing expository writing everything all the different types as long as you have some idea of if i get this type this is the way i'll structure it that's the best place to start so you've got some idea of you know how you would structure your 
your writing task, whatever it is. Other things to think about, have an acronym that you can remember, you know, to help you remember these, as you can see on the screen there, the figurative language. Three repairs, compares, shampoo, all of those acronyms, choose one and pick it to use as a checklist when you're writing in the exam. Come up with a little plan at the start, Usually we, we suggest beginning, middle and end, but obviously it's going to vary slightly differently depending on which particular text you've, or what tasks you've been asked to do. So use our checklist to help you know what kind of things to include. Have a look at our model answers to give you an idea of what looks good and just practice a range of different styles so that whatever you come up with, you'll have done something like that previously. So I hope that answers your question um, to an extent. I hope. <laughs> Dia, is asking, Dia is asking, how do we get the coupon for the monthly plan? Uh, Dia, the coupon is webinar 30 and you can utilize it for the monthly plan. It's a very simple coupon. It's just the word webinar followed by 30. There's a question from Sahi San. In the CSSE exam creative writing, will they give points to help the writing? I think that just means like suggestions. Um, okay. I mean, okay, CSSC is very specific in its style. It is two sections and it usually says in six or seven sentences, write so-and-so. They give you a prompt. It's usually some kind of description or short sort of narrative for the first one. And then the second one tends to be something like write about someone that inspires you or write about your best experience at school or write about give instructions on how to brush your teeth or something like that. Like that was up, that came up a couple of years ago. So they give you a prompt and they tell you how much to write, that's the information that you get given. The rest is up to you. So you should make sure that every single sentence that you write contains some kind of interesting device, you know, some maybe a rhetorical question, maybe sensory language, maybe an interesting piece of punctuation. Make sure each sentence is worth, is, is worth using because you don't have that many to use. So I hope that, um, hope that helps. Emma is asking, what does the monthly plan do? So Emmet, the monthly plan essentially unlocks the complete website to you. And it is for just 99 pounds a month. And we are also giving a 30% discount. So this comes down to 69 pounds a month. And with this, you would be accessing all these resources that we have detailed down. So that is uh, around 180 papers of 11 plus max, uh, 10,000 topic wise questions, 100 papers of English past papers, uh, 1,400 questions in verbal, 1,900 in non-verbal, all the way to CEMGL, CSSE packs of board-wise questions. Uh, we also have a very specific pack on the literary devices that are used in comprehension and creative writing. And uh, we also have the interview guide. You can go through that. You can also access six 11 plus video courses. These video courses uh, are a great way for those uh, who are maybe having a time constraint and not able to attend uh, live classes, you can always access these video courses. We have comprehension, creative writing, algebra, geometry, fractions. And as you can see, there's a bundle, which is all in one for 249 pounds, but you can get, you can access all of these for just 69 pounds through the monthly plan. So we um, encourage you to uh, subscribe to the monthly plan. Sure, I mean, I'll uh, get in touch with the team regarding this. Max is asking, we subscribe to the monthly plan at the beginning of August. Will we still be able to access the site at the end of September? Yes, so this is a monthly recurring plan. So the plan gets renewed every month. And uh, as long as you have not canceled your subscription, you can always um, access it regardless of when you open it. So Jalpa is asking, do you have past papers for Sutton School? Uh, Jalpa, I would uh, request you to check out our website. We do have a lot of past papers and all of them are sufficient to prepare you for any school. So that could be Wallington, Sutton, whichever school you are, you are targeting, you would be prepared for it using our past papers because they have been created using the actual questions which were asked by schools in their examinations. Raji is asking any idea how many questions in GL? So Raji, in GL, as uh, you can see, we had detailed out, uh, there are around 50 questions and it would, it would be best to just uh, go through the school's website and see uh, the exam paper pattern and that would give you more clarity. So Salish, uh, 
the after the discount, it would be £69 per month. And for £69, you are able to access uh, six whole video courses, 30,000 questions. So it's a very good deal. Okay. Uh, there's a question. Does FSC have creative writing? Um, to my uh, to my knowledge, I think it does. Yes, but I think it's done in a separate section to the comprehension and vocabulary part. Uh, so yes, it does. But um, they are sat separately because I'm as far as I'm aware, the first part's on the computer, so the second part is is written. So that's that's my knowledge. But it, all this information is available online as well. If you want to look and check, look on the website. Then I'm sure they will tell you more in more detail. Okay, then. So shall we wrap up, Lewis? I think yes, I think so. I think we've answered most of the questions. Uh, there's just one from Dia, I think, who's just saying how many questions are in the Mill Hill County one and the St. Michael's one. I mean, because those are very specific schools, unless we know which exact board they're on, it's probably unclear. If it's GL, it's probably be, they'll be the same pattern, the one we've shown. Um, but it does vary. It does vary. So um, I would assume, I would check the check the exam board that you're on and then co compare that to our exam, our sort of like templates that we've shown and you'll find out. But yeah, I, I don't know exactly for sure. Okay. But I think that's it. Yes. So thank you so much. We will be sharing all the slides with you, the planners, the sample papers, and also the uh, answer sheets. So utilize our webinar 30 uh, discount coupon, go through the website, explore our subscriptions. They've all been created with 10 years of expert experience. So yes, with that, we would like to conclude the webinar. Thank you so much for joining and we wish you all the very best for the 11 plus examinations. Uh, we wish that you do your best and come out with flying colors. Thank you so much. Good luck, everyone. Take care.